This is a presentation made by a group of swimmers to Yorkshire Water on the 23rd of March 2022. Although we're linked with the Outdoor Swimming Society, we don't represent them. We represent only ourselves and the groups of swimmers that we're members of. We start our presentation with this quote which came from one of our groups. Um, we do it because it captures how important outdoor swimming is to so many people, but also because it makes it really clear that some of the things that we're going to say in this presentation, Yorkshire Water and other swim operators might not agree with. From the many sports I've done, it's the safest and the best community. Reservoirs in particular are so important as they're the safest, most predictable bodies of water with the safest entry points. And the serenity, views, magic, it's such a special world. So, to put all our cards on the table, we want to change your views on swimming in reservoirs and particularly to persuade you to remove no swimming signs and work with us as swimmers to improve safety. There are good reasons why you should. The case for outdoor swimming is strong for you as well as for us. This slide summarises some of the top reasons and the next four slides go through them one by one. Firstly, the tide has turned. When no swimming signs were first introduced and no swimming positions were first adopted by water operators, very few people swam outdoors. Now we know that 7.5 million people swim outdoors in England alone. There are over 300 organised swimming groups and in Yorkshire we know that groups have more than 23,000 members and many people are not members of groups. Your own records show that there were 8,000 visits to a handful of reservoirs, I think it was about 13, in just six weeks last summer. So basically the rising popularity of swimmers swimming means that it cannot any longer be pre prevented. Also we suspect that for you trying to prevent swimming is not cost effective. Obviously we don't have access to your internal accounts um, but we can see that there are expenses att attached to prevention and uh, things like fencing, security, signage and your re recent marshals pilot counted those 8,000 people who swam but it didn't stop many of them. Uh, our own survey found that only 10% of swimmers were deterred even temporarily. Most of them just went off somewhere else or they waited for the marshals to go away and kept swimming. So money's being diverted from, your, from other operational and strategic priorities and we'd say it's being diverted unnecessarily. Moreover, we, we know that you have a legal duty to provide access to the waters and lands you operate. Um, we'll come back to that. And uh, we think that you're going to incur costs when swimmers eventually challenge exclusion, whether they're challenging that through legal action or through um, actions like mass trespass, which are coming. Contrary to kind of popular opinion, the risks of swimming are low. Those are low, low risks for swimmers and also low risks for water operators. Um, we have only the 2020 figures, the 2021 ones will be out soon. But in 2020, one person drowned in any reservoir in England. Obviously, that's one person too many, but it still is only one person. Only um, a fifth, roughly, of people drowning were swimming. More people drown walking or running, that's 89 out of the 242 people who drowned, um, or drown playing or fishing. Reservoirs are much safer than the sea, the drowning statistics show that, and most swimmers actively manage their risks wherever they're swimming. There are low risks for water operators too. The law is clear that landowners and water operators are not liable for accidents where people swim at their own risk unless and only if they aren't warned about unusual unseen hazards. So water operators don't need to warn people about known risks like water is cold because everybody knows water's cold. They only need to warn them about things that might be hidden that they might not expect to see that they know about, say something hidden under the water. Uh, swimmers pose swimming and swimmers pose no risk to reservoirs themselves, no structural risks, and no swimming signs give water operators no legal protection. 
the benefits of outdoor swimming are high. Um, quite a lot of the next few slides are about those benefits, but they start with, with what we call some headlines to the front. They start with health and well-being for swimmers and with statutory duties for water operators and the, the way that swimmers can help you meet those. So health and well-being, two more quotations here. That moment when you enter the water and your thoughts quieten, you become still inside. On land, I'm constantly in pain. In water, I'm not. So swimmers talk often about health and well-being. You can see there, there's two quotes that capture the physical well, well-being, physical benefits and the mental health benefits. And then moving on to benefits for uh, water operators. There's a statutory duty on water operators and here's an extract from the Water Industry Act uh, 1991, section 3.5. It shall be the duty of every company to ensure that the water or land is made available for recreational purposes and is so made available in the best manner. Um, and we'd argue that swimmers can help you meet that statutory duty. There are other benefits and opportunities. And again, this slide summarises sort of the top four that we've identified. And the next four slides go through those one by one. So firstly, effective safety initiatives. There's some great stuff going on already. There's education focused on what works. So for instance, the Float to Live campaign. There's potential for understanding different groups and behaviours. We could be doing initiatives that target identified high-risk groups and activities. So for instance, young men, alcohol, jumping. There's community engagement and risk assessment. That's been done in some places. Um, and could be done again to improve information about how people perceive risks and what might change, make them change their behaviours. And there's more partnership work that we could do with you and the National Water Safety Forum, Swim England, Outdoor Swimming Society. So effectively what we're saying here is that your no swimming policy doesn't prevent swimming, but it means that you can't engage fully with the initiatives that do work more actively with swimmers and that might help reduce risks more effectively with a focus on learning rather than on prevention. There are also opportunities to enhance sites and environment. And we know that this is one of Yorkshire Water's interests, that those little logos on the left were lifted straight out of your, um, your website for your environmental projects. There are instances already where volunteer site swimmers volunteer to help with site maintenance and litter picking. Um, and help keep sites clean. There are also instances where swimmers are involved in ad hoc alerts about damage or incidents and necessary repairs and that happened just last week where Yorkshire Water emailed us about um, a burst pipe in Sheffield City Centre and we got messages out to networks of swimmers very quickly um, and to, to some kayakers as well, um, reaching thousands of people within a matter of hours. Um, there's also potential opportunities for swimmers to help with environmental and water quality surveys and with education and climate and biodiversity projects there are lots of different ways that swimmers um, are involved in other places acting as informal custodians and as volunteers for a variety of local environmental projects so there's huge potential we think for swimmers to support Yorkshire Waters and other operators environmental manage management priorities. Another opportunity is community health projects. You may or may not be aware, but the evidence is really strong that swimming is good for health and well-being. And that's not just evidence from swimmers, but um, clinical evidence too. We've uh, That screenshot on the right is, I think, from the, um, the bulletin for the Royal College of Anaesthetists, and, and, and it links to a feature that they ran recently uh, about uh, swimming and its uh, clinical benefits. Uh, there's, you can go to it for other medical references, but basically they, they're presenting evidence that swimming protects against diabetes and obesity. It's associated with a reduction in death from cardiovascular disease. It helps movement and musculoskeletal disease because buoyancy offloads body weight and it relaxes joints. And I have personal experience of that, so I can testify for that personally. Um, and also there's clinical evidence that outdoor swimming reduces the onset of depression and it alleviates symptoms of 
anxiety and it overall improves quality of life. So there are great opportunities. Um, Yorkshire Water has a Love Yorkshire programme and we think that uh, opportunities for swimmers to be involved with health projects that link with that, also with your corporate social responsibility and, and other community initiatives. There are some financial opportunities too and it's possibly true that swimming isn't a great income generator and that's never going to bring Yorkshire Water huge amounts of income but there would be potential for you to run some events. Perhaps an even bigger uh, opportunity is to do things like British Gas. Um, they use swim event sponsorship as a key marketing tool and that's a possibility for you too. Um, you have the potential to develop some reservoirs as swim amenities and partnerships with non-profit groups might help you draw in other income. So we don't want to pretend that everything's going to be smooth sailing. There are some choppy waters um, and that we've identified as swimmers two particular areas of tension that we'd like to tend and think we need to tackle together. Um, and first of, the, of these, it's understanding risks. So we think that our perceptions of risks and your perceptions of risks are, are, are slightly different and that it would be useful to work together to identify and agree some really robust information about real risks. Um, um, you have um, incident information and near miss in information that it would be very interesting to explore together to find out what contributes to situations where swimming is, is actually risky. Um, also your signage uh, makes uh, claims that swimmers know are untrue. Um, there are there's some changes going, of, of you, both you and other water operators are are changing your signage and, and, and that's great and some positive developments but still there are some signs that say things like high risk of drowning and as we've already mentioned we, we know that um, reservoirs don't have a particularly high risk of drowning for swimmers um, and, and 12 degree water temperatures um, and this uh, along the bottom there's a, a scarf that a swimmer knitted a uh, one row um, for every week um, no I think it might have been every day that she swam in her local swim spot and the temperatures that are white and blue show um, temperatures sort of below 12 degrees and then as they go up above uh, um, the, the reds and pinks and yellows and greens the temperatures above 12 degrees so swimmers know that 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 claim is is untrue an untrue claims on signs undermines the credibility of messaging and it stops people listening. Um, and if people aren't listening, that increases risks. So your signs could more usefully mention other important known risks like alcohol. The other area of tension is around responsible swimmers. Um, and, and we had some early conversations where you were kind of clearly thinking of swimmers alongside antisocial behaviour, which is difficult for a lot of swimmers to, to stomach. Um, swimmers have a strong culture of taking responsibility for their own safety, of considering others and of protecting the environment. And, and we'd like you to recognise this um, and we'll work with you to evaluate it if, um, if you need to be convinced of it. Um, but we invite you to engage with us to e explore specifically responsible swimming rather than no swimming, starting with um, our presentation to the visitor safety group, which is linked at the bottom of this slide. Perhaps most importantly of all, something that we really want to highlight, um, no swimming approaches, we think, actually increase risks. And the reasons for that are that um, no swimming signs are much less useful than accurate safety information. And they often don't get read at all. And that signs that were credible and that included accurate information would pre pre prevent, you know, help keep people safer in a way that no swimming signs simply don't. No swimming signs also don't influence risk takers or the people who end up in water accidentally but they might be driving away some of the most regular and responsible swimmers who do actually help keep others safe. So for instance, where you have swimmers who are well-informed, well managing risks, carrying tow floats or even throw ropes, um, if somebody falls in, they can help keep people safe. If people are behaving 
um, dangerously. Swimmers have good track record of challenging some of that behaviour and saying, for instance, to teenagers, hey guys, don't jump in there, there are rocks underneath. We're also worried that some of the things that come along with your no swimming approach, so for instance, the use of marshals, dog wardens in the summer of 2021, led to some issues and some of them might have been dangerous issues. So there were a few dangerous incidents. There were some threats made to swimmers that were reported to the police. And we, we know that you're um, as keen as we are to make sure that the use of wardens doesn't, for instance, end up with somebody being bitten by dogs. Um, but we'd say it was a disproportionate step that would be unnecessary if you didn't have a no-swimming approach. And frankly, a no-swimming approach seems out of step with the evidence base and with the legal and policy landscape. And this slide summarises some of those kind of key points. Its intention, as we've already mentioned, with your statutory duty to facilitate access under the Water Companies Act, but also with the DETR Code of Practice on Conservation Access and Recreation. Your own accident and near miss data, which we, you know, we haven't actually seen, but we have asked about, um, and they don't appear to be providing evidence that swimming is a significant risk. What national evidence suggests is that falling in the water is the main drowning risk, um, and apparently followed by jumping from height. Um, and they get conflated, but swimming isn't drowning and swimming isn't falling or jumping from height. And as we've already mentioned, reservoirs are much safer for swimming than beaches or rivers. That's backed up by all the accident and drowning data. And swimmers know this. There's a, there's a right to swim in Scotland and across most of Europe. Um, and swim access campaigns in England are moving us closer to this. And you might want to consider whether as water operators you want to be ahead of that curve or behind it. Other organisations, particularly the National Water Safety Forum and the Visitor Safety Group and Swim England, are all focused on safer swimming rather than no swimming. There's some guidance which is linked from this slide um, from the Visitor Safety Group that provides a framework for risk assessment, which we know Yorkshire Water are using to um, assess risk for visitors to sites on foot, but not yet for swimmers. And we think that this could provide um, a framework to encourage responsible open water swimming and good, they're a good practice model for landowners and we'd be keen to help you um, move forward with that. And we've included this quotation because it comes from the visitor safety group, not from us as swimmers. So this is not what swimmers are saying, but it's what a landowners group are saying. Water, open water swimming, provides significant health and well-being benefits. It also serves to connect participants with the outdoors and it may help generate respect for the environment. So again, that's not us saying that. It's landowners beginning to recognise it. Now this slide is full of text which is small and difficult to read, so I'll, I'll read it out. But it, it basically is a series of quotations that came from people in, in one swimming group who we ask, we ask them, what does swimming mean to you? Um, and we've included it because understanding what reservoir swimming means to people helps you understand why you're never going to be able to stop it. It helps you understand why it's so important to people. I couldn't have survived the last few years without swimming in our glorious reservoir. A physical and mental reset every time. My doctors used to tell me that they could tell the difference when I was swimming. Freedom from my power chair. Freedom from pain. Freedom to be like others. Freedom to be myself. Freedom to exercise. Freedom to be at one with nature. I can be myself in the water. I can forget all the chaos and everyday stresses. The beautiful Sheffield Lakeland reservoirs are my lifeline to health. The reservoirs make me a person, a better person. It has literally been my lifesaver during the pandemic. And this next quote comes from a carer. Dealing with professionals and caring for my child was consuming and overwhelming. 
Yorkshire water reservoirs were really the only option I had to get peace in the small pockets of time I could find. A daily swim in cold water reduces the swimming in my knee, mobilises the joint. A day without my swim and the pain is back. If it weren't for my swimming, I would be unemployed and miserable. I've got autism and have never been able to enjoy swimming indoors because of the noise, smell and crowding. It's too much. Swimming outdoors gave me the space and solitude I needed to become confident in water. I love being at one with nature and there's no better way than being immersed in water. I feel cuddled by Mother Nature. I have ADHD and it's the only thing that clears my mind. It's a boost for mental health and just amazing and should be prescribed by the NHS. It's fun, restorative and makes me feel great in a short space of time but with effects that last for days. So I've taken the time to read all of those because you can see how personally important swimming is to so many different people. And there's a link on this next screen to a film which makes a very similar point. I won't play it now, but it's uh, made by a, a friend of mine, Amy Water, Walker, and some filmmakers. And it basically outlines how important outdoor swimming is to people. And understanding that importance is really important for water operators because it kind of explains why this is a, a rising tide of outdoor swimming that you're not going to be able to stop. So we're almost at the end now, we really are at the end and, and our hope is that Yorkshire Water will change the no swimming stance and work with us to recognise responsible swimming at your own risk. You might like to look at the 16 reasons for swimming access in reservoirs that are linked at the bottom of this slide as well. They were research, well researched and compiled over a period of time and they've been refreshed just um, shortly before this presentation. This slide has got lots of further information, um, uh, some videos and some other resources um, from the Outdoor Swimming Society, from the National Water Safety Organisation, the statistics that we've quoted in this slide and from other places too. And finally, this is us. This is a group of people who've been responsible for pulling this presentation together and, and liaising with swim groups to gather the quotes that we've used in it. Um, and as you, you'll see if you read our bios, we're, we're all people um, who've been involved with outdoor swimming, um, campaigning and in other professional roles. And we all swim in Yorkshire water reservoirs. Thank you for listening. <laughs>